And just a brief overview about Hedy. Um, we are we specialize in mobile technologies, and we really work on having sustainable and long-term partnerships. And we work with Fortune 500s, but we also work with startups. And what's been rewarding for me working with this company is that I, or building this company, is essentially figuring out solutions that make sense so that everyone gets a return on their investment. And really to understand that is about making sure that you're making good business decisions that are rooted in um, rooted in the needs versus the technology. So an overview of how what I'm going to cover today is kind of a little bit of our secret sauce at Hedy and how we approach getting this input and getting information in an effective, easy way so that we save time but also can move quickly. And then also um, just the six step process. It's more view this as kind of a structured way to get input because it's something that we've finessed through the years to make sure that, you know, again, the goal is that as a product owner or leader, you want to make sure that you are not spending too much time and not getting the correct inputs to make a really good technology decision. So without further ado, a collaborative approach to technology decisions. Um, I think what really we lead with at Hedy is that though we provide technology solutions, we really need and encourage for them to be guided by business objectives. And it's something that we really focus on because technology is a solution and business needs to provide the why. And without having the why, we could implement something that would be a great technical solution, but you're not gonna get a return on as a business. So mapping that in advance really helps us and our product teams thrive. And that's why we approach kind of this discovery or research as we do. But there are also some additional benefits outside of streamlining your time and getting the correct inputs. And some of the benefits that we've seen, not only internally in Hedy, but also with a lot of our partners, is that empowering your teams to help make these decisions leads to more efficient decision making. And part of that is the fact that you're encouraging cross industry research. So if you have a digital product team and they feel like overwhelmed or they feel like technology is kind of outside of what their wheelhouse should be, it's like encouraging them, people to have a universal language is really beneficial. So at Hedy at least we have our QA understand kind of what are the needs and requirements of marketing and push strategies and then we have our engineering team get some understanding as to what is required for DevOps. And ultimately, when people come to the table, they have a mutual understanding about what, um, what everyone is thinking about and a mutual respect. And that increases ownership of the foundational tech decisions, which is a huge benefit is that um, Sometimes product owners or leaders are expected, okay, you need to decide what framework we should use, but getting inputs from the departments or teams that are impacted really facilitate um, mo more ownership. And down the line, you see that people are more invested in, it, in it succeeding. So again, technology is a tool. People are the pe people that support it are the people that drive it. And then, Lastly, collaboration is something that we see at Hedy stimulate innovation. So bringing all these different players into the room, listening to each other, um, really brings forward solutions that we wouldn't have thought of independently because you're looking at it through your perspective and your lens. So how do we structure these inputs? Um, kind of view it as a um, design, uh, research sprint. And I use kind of technology as this overarching, but you can think of technology as anything that needs to be integrated. It could be an SDK, it could be a new platform, it could be a mobile framework. We've applied it in a lot of different senses. So um, that's 
the overarching, but if you have questions about specific applications, you can um, put it in the QA. I think there's a little tab there that you can add your questions and Evan will be um, making sure that the questions come towards the end. So step number one, and probably one of the most important, um, I'm personally, I wasn't a technical person when I started at Hedy, but I helped build out the engineering team. And I think I learned through direct experience of talking is that that open communication of com explaining what the business need and having a back and forth of what are potential options to achieve that business need, it's a really um, valuable way for them to kind of get fluency into what's valuable to me, but also for me to get fluency in what's valuable or what's important to think about when you're implementing something. So one partner and example that we have recently is um, they came to us and they said, okay, we handle their native apps and they wanted us to explore Flutter. Um, an example of what it means to frame your business need is that that is, can be too open of a research topic. So exploring Flutter, um, then you're looking at the industry as a whole when ultimately you want to root it in what your business and unique requirements are. So having been through this a few times, we were like, okay, so we can definitely research Flutter for you, but we're only going to give you um, valuable information if you give us a little bit more clarity of what your objective is. So we went back to the leadership team and we just said, okay, um, could you give us a little bit more clarity on the why of why you wanted to proceed with um, Flutter? And that was a simple 15 minute conversation that really helped us create guardrails for what our research needed to include. And they said, okay, so we have two native apps. We are looking to refactor or replatform. So now is the time to evaluate a new technology. On top of that, we're looking to revisit our whole operations. So right now we are siloed and we work in very siloed groups and our product is therefore suffering. So we as a company need to streamline our operations overall and how we um, believe that Flutter can support us is having a single code base um, that's supported and can give our users the need would really support in our overall goal of streamlining op operations as a whole. So that additional context, it was a 10 to 15 minute conversation, helped us step back and be like, okay, so streamlining operations is the goal. We can definitely root it. Um, the technology and make sure that we're solving that goal in addition to giving them insights to what are trade-offs with their current experience and where they can go with Flutter and this cross-platform. So that's the reasoning for why we spend a lot of time on the business need upfront um, because it really sets guardrails for the research, for the, the investigation for all the different stakeholders. Second, um, this is where you get a shared responsibility. So um, more often than not, when you integrate something new, um, a new uh, feature or a new um, framework or a new platform, it's gonna impact more than the engineering team. So therefore, it's important to identify who is this going to be impact and include them in the conversation? Um, we These are the usual suspects, but of course this depends on the makeup of your company, um, your team. Sometimes there's shared responsibilities, but usually there's product management is involved. Um, design may or may not be involved. Maybe they need different marketing assets. If you're evaluating a marketing platform, Engineering is definitely involved. Quality assurance is usually involved in DevOps and marketing. So again, it depends on what you're evaluating, but also your team. So this is these are just some guiding things that we see at Hedy that we include people that we usually include in the conversation. Um, so here, 
um, we got to the third step. So now we've clearly identified the tech we'd like to explore, the business objective for exploring that tech, the stakeholders that are gonna be impacted. And now we need to set a research timeline. So setting guardrails for the business objective, it's good to also time box people and what, how much time they need to commit to this. So I said earlier on, we view this kind of as a research sprint. One week tends to be a sufficient amount of time but you can feel that out as to what you think is most important. But it allows the team to prioritize or members of the department or stakeholders to prioritize their most pressing questions and answer those. Uh, one week is also enough to do desk research, research to maybe the vendor itself if you have very specific questions, or you can reach out to people that you know in the industry that may or may not already be using the solution. So it's enough to have all those conversations and start gathering the information that you need from your department that will address the business need. So um, you, one of the things that we realized early on, and this is one of the learnings from Hetty, is that cost, um, there's a direct cost and there's an indirect cost. Um, usually with most solutions. Some people may view this as trade-offs or, um, or just in general, like there's a cost also to launch and there's a cost to maintain. So there's things that you're factoring in above and beyond just the technical solution. And this is why it's nice to have your departments hone in on how, what would be the direct or indirect cost for them. Um, and evaluate cost against that. And an example that we had early on a couple years ago for Hetty, and this is, we kind of learned a little bit of the hard way, was that we were so excited about the progressive web app launch. And I think most people were. Uh, being a mobile app agency, one of the biggest hurdles of introducing an app is A, their acquisition of users, but also the cost of maintaining an app. So when progressive web apps came onto the scene, I, I think a lot of people and people continue to be excited of now you can leverage app functionality from better user experience, push notifications, et cetera, without having to build out a separate app. Um, so we went, entered this space pretty early on. We had a company that was a mid-sized e-commerce agency that wanted us to explore this. Um, we spoke directly with the founders, didn't include the stakeholders as we should have. And they said, we wanna implement this code. Can you do this for us? And then we're gonna take it on going forward. So we implemented it and we saw the successes that you would see. There was just a higher return on Android and some of the data was definitely promising. But once we released and then we were transitioning back to the e-commerce company to own, that's when we got visibility to how all these stakeholders were indirectly and directly impacted. And they weren't really leveraging the full benefits of the technology itself and it impacted the whole pipeline. So the indirect cost were essentially we introduced now um, this progressive web app. So now the marketing team had this additional tool that they could uh, leverage for push notifications, but the marketing team wasn't didn't feel comfortable using it. So therefore they didn't end up learning it and we didn't plan for consulting to get them trained and up to speed. So the marketing was frustrated that now we have something that you know they need to learn and figure out and they couldn't plan for. We had the engineering team. Our engineering team was exploring a new tech stack and we're very proficient in like advanced front end code. Their team was more familiar with their current system and structure. So once we started transitioning the code and gave this um, additional code to maintain, 
there was frustration from the engineering team because they were like, okay, well now we're moving slower and what are our expectations? Uh, the QA, their internal QA was um, had difficulties implementing and they we got pushed back there. And lastly, analytics, because now we introduced a new viewport and to really see that this was driving value, we needed someone that was going to drive the analytics. So ultimately, we had a really good plan for launch, but we didn't have a good plan for ongoing. And the, it led to the leadership realizing, okay, the ongoing is not going to work for our current team structure, and we really want to just uh, reinvest. So we ended up removing that code. So it was a little bit, it was expensive and frustrating for all people involved. So that's why including the stakeholders early on and having them evaluate what are potential skill gaps that may or may not exist on their team and what what could they, how can you prevent that and plan for that? And including that cost into the cost of implementing it really helps you evaluate, is this the right investment for you right now? Uh, but there are also upsides. So usually a new technology is introduced because there are benefits and it's important to surface those benefits and think about, okay, we don't have this right now. This is something we could introduce. What, how could this change and improve and also achieve the objectives that the business has set forth for us? And internalizing that is just a valuable exercise. And it's also a valuable exercise to realize, okay, maybe you know, the benefits with this technology aren't that great, but I have an alternative solution if the business objective is X. So giving your team the opportunity to kind of see the potential of introducing something new, new, but also opening it up that your team can introduce some alternate solutions and opening up again a dialogue of what works for your unique business versus someone else's. And the sixth and final step that I have here is discuss and decide. Um, so ultimately, and we kind of, again, it's a research sprint. You have different stakeholders that are going to be impacted, give their input, evaluate the technology from their perspective, become more proficient in terminology of introducing the, to their tech stack. But also the final step is introducing this team together and having them present their findings. And the real value that we've seen in doing this is that you're kind of, you're understanding that what people need and uh, how they're thinking about things and you're just getting a shared respect. And ideally you're, and if you just do decide to proceed, one of the benefits is that you um, are able to then prioritize based on what you heard in that room and it streamlines again the post part of an integration. Either way, this process really brings clarity and that's our end goal. And at Hedy, we, we are um, very strong on technology and especially mobile technology. But if it's a foundation to your business. Don't let it be a mystery. Um, include your broader team to the discussion. Really solidify what your business needs are and then help people around you demystify your tech stack. And we've seen our most successful partners really do well when they are when they approach it as such. And our most innovative teams are the ones that you know, want to hear from the operations, want to hear from the marketing team, want to hear from the QA. It's asking questions, taking ownerships, and encouraging collaborative solutions. And I know this is not a super long talk, and I can only cover the high level components of it. So therefore, I do have a handout, which goes into a little bit more of the tips and tactile questions that you could use with your team. And um, if you're interested in that, please download that. Um, or if you have a follow-up 
question with me directly. My email is andrea at hetty.io. And I know there's only a few minutes left. I have a warning up that's already come up. So I do want to open that up for Q&A if any questions have come in. So Evan, let me know. Um, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. Um, everybody, this is your last two minute call for any questions that you guys may have as an audience. Would love to hear them. Um, yeah, I can hear yeah. So I would definitely, if you'd like, um, if you come and think of something, please email me directly. I've included it a handout it kind of details how to evaluate a growing technology. And my last takeaway to people that are product owners, distribute the research, get the inputs from your team. Not only does it save you time, but it improves the overall experience of your team, but it, and it improves, in most cases, at least what I've seen, uh, the technology decisions around them. Yeah, I think you just spoke it so well that everyone just still yeah. still processing it, you know? <laughs> Probably, yes. Okay. There, there are some additional group chats, though. Um, so if you guys go to the networking center and anyone else on here that's here as well, um, yeah, feel free to check out the net the networking center. There will be, like, continued discussion there, um, especially on what was spoken on here. Um, and we'd love to hear anyone else's insights. Um, but other than that, Andrea, thank you so much for coming to speak with us. I mean, just even your intro, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to have you and, and to hear your expertise in this field. Okay, thank you so much. All right. All right, everyone. Well, we'll see you all at the next session and look forward to chatting to you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.